if you are taking a drug without the advice or the prescription of a medical professional that medical professional covers a, long, a list of people mm, okay. so the person just feels like okay my head is aching me mm. my stomach is aching me my body just feels i think i, I should get panadol isn't that, that the everyday thing that we all uh, do? Uh, no, no, I, no, everybody would, would get some hits. Because <laughs> now you are, you are seeing like myself. You are seeing myself. <laughs> yeah. so everybody will get some hits. So okay. now, the person feels pain in their body. Mm. Meanwhile, it could be a symptom of something else yeah. you get. Mm. The pain in your head could be a symptom of something else going on in your body. Mm. But the person just assumes that it is headache. Mm. And the person goes to self diagnose or self medicate. Mm. And I have to just say, ah, it's headache. I can't take the Panadol. That is drug abuse. Ah, I work too hard. Right now, I'm going to be recording shows for the next three days. Or I'm going to have meetings back to back throughout mm. the day. I might not be able to pause during the meeting to, to take this medicine. And I'm meant to take one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the night. Every every three hours or four hours or so. And person mm. like, okay, why don't I take the, the three? Mm. that i've taken one two three i i can just take it once <laughs> so the whole day i don't have to mm. go and and the person takes the dosage for the whole day at one gulp that is taking more than the prescribed amount that mm. is also drug abuse so some countries marijuana is legal in nigeria if you're caught with any amount of marijuana yeah uh, yeah suspect mm. there are some other countries that alcohol is illegal yeah, if you're caught with alcohol, it's nothing. You can have alcohol or anything. So depending on the state the, you go to. Depending state you go to. So, drug abuse, pres taking the drug without prescription or advice of a medical person, taking the drug different from the prescription or the advice from the medical person, and being caught with a substance that is not legal in our region or territory. Mm. Yes. Now we'll start this conversation taking our quote first from Benjamin Ali who once said, If you can quit for a day, you can quit for a lifetime. Absolutely spot on. My next quote is from Dami Lavito who once said, One of the hardest things was learning that I was worth recovery. Okay? And I'll take this one from Seat Adams Smith who once said, you can't defeat the darkness by keeping it caged inside of you. Okay. Now my last one will be from Steve Maroboli who once said that life doesn't get easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient. And I remember the one from Frederick that says what doesn't kill you definitely will make you stronger. Hello and welcome to the conversation. We're reaching you from Cap Fans Television Studio here. The nation's capital of Abuja. I am Annabelle Oji. Now let's see how this goes relate to what we'll be discussing today. As we'll be talking about drug abuse, drug misuse, or drug um, trafficking. Whichever one that rings a bell to you. And my guest on the show today is Kenneth Anito, who is um, executive director of a new thing international foundation with almost a decade of experience in the non-profit sector kenneth anito is was appointed as the ambassador of of the senate committee on drugs and narcotics to serve as a consultant for the joint um, committee on drugs and narcotics of the national assembly and he is also elected as the national treasurer of the national almond producers processors and marketers association of nigeria that's natman at the federal ministry of trade and investment that's a very large like i don't i'm, I'm trying not to take everything okay. <laughs> you're welcome to the show kenneth it's a pleasure to be here thank great. you for this opportunity great great to have you so now let's start um, by talking about um, sometimes when you talk about when you say drug abuse uh, or drug misuse, it looks like one and the same thing to some people. Some mm. people will tell you that tomato, tomato, same difference. That's like okay. six and a half a dozen. So okay. help us um, um, demystify. Is there a thin line between drug abuse and drug misuse? And at what point has it now gotten worse okay um first of all i'd like to thank the management and staff of captain tv for this opportunity 
what we do is 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 very integral and what you guys do is important because you guys give us the platforms to sensitize enlighten and give necessary information that could save lives thank you very much um i believe we should just define some terms that's what you want me to do first of all before we dive into that what's a drug a drug is any natural occurring or man-made substance that once taken into the body it changes the normal behavior of the body or the mind okay yes so now now that we know what a drug is let's look at what is drug abuse mm. or drug misuse drug abuse um i would like to just put three areas that will help to define what drug abuse is first if you are taking a drug without the advice or the prescription of a medical professional that medical professional covers a long a list of people mm, okay. so the person just feels like okay my head is aching me mm. my stomach is aching me my body just feels i think i, I should get panadol is that the everyday thing that we all yeah, do uh, no, no, I, no everybody would, would get some hits <laughs> because now you are seeing like myself you are seeing yourself, yeah. <laughs> this so everybody will get some hit so okay. now the person feels pain in their body mm. meanwhile it could be a symptom of something else yeah. you get mm. the pain in your head could be a symptom of something else going on in your body mm. but the person just assumes that it is headache mm. and the person goes to self-diagnose or self-medicate mm. and that just say ah it's headache i can't take the panadol that is drug abuse oh without a prescription secondly okay. now the person has felt symptoms in his body and he's saying okay my head is aching me i will not just take this drug like this i feel like this could be something else and the person goes to the pharmacy and they say ah there's uh, uh, goes to see a doctor and say no it's not a headache oh, but there's right. actually something else going on and the headache is just one of the symptoms of it now the doctor now points out other symptoms the person didn't notice and say okay this is how you treat this mm or uh, so when the doctor now diagnoses the person and gives him the medication the person goes home with the medication and it's like ah i work too hard right now i'm going to be recording shows for the next three days or i'm going to have meetings back to back throughout mm. the day i might not be able to pause during the meeting to to take this medicine and i'm meant to take one in the morning one in the afternoon one in the night every every three hours or four hours or so and the person mm. is like okay why don't i take the the three Hmm. that i've taken one two three i i can just take it once <laughs> so the whole day i don't have to hmm. go and and the person takes the dosage for the whole day at one gulp that's taking more than the prescribed amount that hmm. is also drug abuse okay now or well, some will call that drug drug misuse so that's drug abuse then the third pragma that we captured in our definition of drug abuse is when someone is caught with a substance that is not legal in the territory or the region in which the person is there are ah. some countries that cannabis is legal mm. but, but, but it will be worthy of note that for all those countries that legalized marijuana the crime rates reduced but the the people that were admitted into the psychiatric yeah. hospital it's it's increased substantially okay. mm -hmm. back to the definition so when the person is caught with a substance that is not legal in the territory or the region in which the person is domiciled mm. that is also a drug abuse so some countries marijuana is legal in nigeria if you're caught with any amount of marijuana yeah uh, you're a suspect mm. there are some other countries that alcohol is illegal here if you're caught with alcohol it's nothing you can have alcohol or anything so on the state the, you go to, you go to. so drug abuse Pres taking the drug without prescription or advice of a medical person taking the drug different from the prescription or the advice from the medical person and being caught with a substance that is not legal in our region or territory mm. yes okay so like you said that we all find ourselves in this round table and some have already seen myself in the picture now if okay you've talked about drug abuse and then drug misuse how about um drug trafficking i hear um the information person or the spokesperson for NDLEA say that um, it is it is um, understandable if you misuse drug, but then where the crime is is the peddling, the trafficking of drugs. How true is this? Mm, well, the truth of the matter is that.
from what the spokesperson, which is Femi Baba Femi, the director of media for the NDLA, from what he said, he's putting a definition that there are so many underlying factors that could make a person susceptible to substance abuse, okay. to abuse substances. And some of those underlying factors can go from availability in the home. And some homes that drugs are available readily in the home that they mm. see it's the parent there's a school that we had a program in we had a year program a sensitization program for the whole year and in the course of the program we were told about a scenario that happened a student came to school with a can a can of cocaine white substance and he was he carried three of his friends and they were somewhere about to delve into it Mm. And the teacher accosted them and said, ah, what are you doing? And the child was like, ah, my daddy, I took it. Where did you get it? I took it from my daddy's table. Uh -huh. My daddy takes it. My daddy's not there. How can you say it's bad? How can you do It was arguing. So availability in the home can push someone to use such substance. Um, also, there's something we call the neurology of addiction. In my study at Harvard Medical School, there was a theory that our professors proposed to us that if someone uses, if a son comes from a family in which they use and abuse substances, mm. that substance abuse disorder is a chronic relapsing brain disorder characterized by a person going after a particular drug, regardless of how it affects him, his family, and his environment. Mm. So when someone uses a drug, since it's a chronic relapsing brain disorder, he has the tendency to damage parts of the brain. And this can either also be proven because our professors showed us brain scans of people before they went into rehabilitation. Mm. So in those brain scans, you would see the parts of the brain that were damaged. Mm. So the neurology of addiction proposes a theory that when that brain is damaged, that it can be transferred to another generation. Ah, so in such a okay. manner that someone that came from that lineage mm. would, when he takes a particular substance, mm. He would be more he would feel different from someone who came from a family where they did not use such substance oh, okay. they went further to give us examples of some families that they say the grandfather was an alcoholic the father is an alcoholic see the son is already mm. drinking they, 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 so the people feel different so someone coming from that kind of family could be more susceptible to being addicted to that particular substance okay. and someone else that came from a family where they didn't use substance other things could be medical a person could be sick have a challenge and the person will start using a particular medication and when the person has healed the person might have psychological challenges coping without using that medication there could be underlying me medical mental health factors a person could be having some types of disorder and might need some of those drugs as a coping mechanism treated for a while mm. and after the person has been treated and is off those drugs the person might still find solace in some yeah, drugs yeah. there are people that have been raped gender-based violence intimate partner violence and they use drugs as a coping mechanism there was a research that i read in pakistan there was a a guy that his wife got him infected with hiv aids and mm -hmm. she owned up that she and he started using opium as a coping mechanism there was a lady that she had post bed pains Mm. and she couldn't cope with it and she told her mother about it and the mother introduced her to opium said this is what i've been using since i when i gave birth to you i started having pains mm. uh, so she got addicted to opium so we call so, that misuse or abuse uh, no that's abuse because ah. because, because no at this point in time there's no prescription so you're abusing it mm. drug abuse misuse abuse the same thing so when oga femi was talking about that it's the traffickers that they go after he's talking he's saying that people that use drugs they if it is in small quantities we are looking even at this point we are looking to in alternatives to incarceration than to send them to prisons to become hardened so if it's in small quantities they would look at ways that they can handle them maybe rehabilitation but if it's in larger quantities which are commercial quantities of course you now know that what's what's this user doing with a user just wants a small quantity to use when you see somebody with a sack, you know that he has the intention to destroy lives, to destroy homes. So when he says okay. that they are more focused on the traffickers, that's what he means. He means that these people have a, a, it's a public health concern. So the one that has it in small quantity is not a concern? It's, he is a concern. Okay. So we want to look at ways that we can treat him. Okay. We want to look at ways that we can help the person. We want to look at rehabilitation want to look at counseling there are different ways to address 
substance abuse issues but the person that's moving commercial quantities across borders across states mm. they want to look at how they can persecute and the ndl is divided into two two they have two views they have the su supply reduction and the drug demand reduction okay so supply reduction they go after the barons mm. and drug demand reduction is working with stakeholders and rehabilitating people ah okay you've actually said quite a number of things that we can actually draw out from but then i hear you talk about um, when you went to school and then you saw some student using it i, I recall reading somewhere i think it was um university of abuja where the um vc said people would now have to student jambites will now have to go through drug tests and then it created loads of hue and cry on social media so is it anything wrong if before you get a job part of your interview process before you get into school you're being tested for um drug use is it bad mm, to me my own personal opinion would be if you own your organization if you're in charge of an organization you have the right to put conditions mm. to the type of people you work with it's on your own prerogative like the owner of the station can say okay nobody packs this car in the compound <laughs> mm. if you don't want to work go somewhere else mm. but if you want to work here you have to go by his rules mm. so it's based on our own personal prerogative it's a choice if you want to associate with people that have a challenge of substance use you know you can go ahead if you don't want to but it's based on their own personal opinion but then because with the um with the definition that you gave we are all in this round table so yeah, yeah. one way or the other mm. we all have yes a Every, problem with everyone it. has challenges towards yes. substance abuse but it's it's not all that are on the round table if you look at it like there is there there are people that are abusing that's of substances that are written that these substances have negative effect like all substances anything done anything done too much mm. without moderation is bad for your body even sugar mm. taking too much sugar is bad taking too much of this but that's some particular substances like when when you talk about the drug test mm. there's some test kits that will flag eight substances there's some test kits that will flag 13 i'll be 14 substances okay. so if the person is on any of those substances it's not sure a red flag that this person is abusing this substance so if he wants a school that is drug free He's just going his way to protect the other people that are not doing drugs okay. and that is his own personal way of going through that some people have developed skills to say on how to beat such tests mm. so he's just trying to keep his school safe who knows what he has passed through in the hands of <laughs> in the hands of dealers trying to sell products in the school in the hands of people maybe people have taken drugs and they've passed out public health concerns mm. challenges different things so he's just trying to safeguard his school and he's okay. he has his own opinion and he has his methodology and he has the way that he wants to do it and since he's opportunity to be in charge of that institution he can go ahead okay to do so. okay so now in all of this either yeah. you're abusing panadol you're abusing or um, um narcotics or like the cocaine that you talked about where students came in which one is bad and which one are the NDLEA after, after their guts? Um, well, we can, there are a lot of drugs that, are, there's nothing that you abuse that does not have an effect on you. But when, when that effect is detrimental to society, it's obviously detrimental to yourself. Okay. Then you can start to, you can start to be interested in your case. Hey. looking at that substances that alter the mind because when we look at drugs we have hallucinogens those are substances that make someone to see mm -hmm. hear smell or even feel things that are not real okay. there are stimulants mm. some stimulants are not illegal okay. some stimulants are legal alcohol is legal <laughs> so there are depressants Mm. So there are different types of drugs and we interact with them every day. There's coffee. Ah, coffee okay. stimulates people. Exactly. Yes. I mean mm. we use coffee every day. Mm. People use drink coffee. I personally don't drink coffee, but a lot of people drink coffee every day to stay active. Mm. We have 
legal. We have there are different classifications of drugs. There's legal and illegal. So most of the drugs that are that they have challenged is with are the ones that are illegal. Okay. Are the ones and there are other drugs that are legal that you can get a prescription for it. But when you abuse it, the agents will have a challenge with you. So there are different substances. The major sub the major reason and even apart from this man-made defined substances that other natural occurring substances that people abuse mm -hmm. i was in when sokoto when sokoto and and bono then bono and while we're having programs that we're hearing things like kuskura as some new drugs kuskura are different types of new substances natural occurring substances that people that go into the pit toilet they yeah, blow so they, they yeah. blow air into it and the and the air hits hits them back and they find themselves in some dizzy states. Yeah. Like people that carry different things. So so it, the the challenge is sometimes when people use these drugs, the effect it has on them and it has on their immediate environment and the things it might lead them to do. So the NDLA is working over time to see that substances are not abused through that drug demand reduction department. Are doing sensitization campaigns, outreaches to school community leaders, and all those to make sure that these drugs are not being abused. And through the supply reduction channel, they are making sure that other narcotic substances are not getting abused too. Okay, so I was actually trying to look for this. There's the, there's a new one I saw. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find it. Then how how do you have people just come up with? Um, they just go and smell the pit toilet, or they just um, I hear some of them is the lizard. Um, dung, dung yeah, yeah. or it is um, a female's um, a part, you already used part like, is it that people just sit down and then they just think of these things or they just try it out and then it works mm, well, you know, it, but you do know that human beings are very creative mm. yes and because of the situation that's going on in the country, a lot of people are looking for an escape but I thank God for His Excellency Baba, and I know that he's putting measures in place to make things better at this point in time. While people are looking for an escape to the basic challenges that everybody has, so they'll get creative. They'll mm -hmm. think about measures, they'll think about toilets, they'll do. But it's not only akin to this country, mm -hmm. it's akin across this nation, across this West Africa, across West the whole Africa. world. Mm -hmm. People are always looking for an escape mm -hmm. to the challenges that they face. Okay, I'm going to ask you because I hear you say something about you talked about personally. So I'm going to ask you what exactly led you to go into okay. new thing, yeah. and what exactly led you to um, become an advocate to push for advocacy into drugs. Were you one a survivor? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, growing up, I had used substances too. Okay. So um, my case was a very, very peculiar case. I did not go to rehab. Oh. I'd not go anywhere. I I was in church, so God helped me ah. to get through it. Okay. So once I got through it, I was like, there are a lot of people that would have this challenge and they wouldn't know how to how to relate, how to come out because of our societal values. Mm. Families are more likely to hide situations than to broadcast it. Mm. So I decided that I this is what I want to do. I want to be an outstretched arm to people that have challenges with substance abuse. So about almost a decade ago, I reached out to two other former drug users and together we started an organization to reach out. We started with our secondary schools, from our secondary schools to other communities, from other communities, legislators got interested in our programs, governors, and even the presidency recognized us a couple of years ago for the outreach that we've been doing. So it's it's personal, okay. it is driven from experience, and we, so when we talk to people sometimes, because we have a lot of testimonies of people that had challenges and people that are no more doing drugs, when we talk to people sometimes, you notice that because you have been in that person's shoes, you don't look at the person like, a criminal it You're is judging them you don't judge them mm. and they are more receptive most times and the truth of the matter is that substance use disorder is not a moral challenge because there are people that come from well-to-do homes that have that challenge that pastors children that have mm. that challenge imams children 
that have that challenge, highest government offices that have that challenge. It's not a moral issue. It's not they have bad parents. There are so many underlying factors, as you spoke about earlier in the interview, that could make a person susceptible to using drugs, to escape medical condition, to escape situation at home, peer pressure as mm -hmm. a coping mechanism. It could be ge genealogy. So many things that can make mm -hmm. a person. So it's no moral issue. It's actually a public health concern. So we should stop looking at people that use drugs as they are bad, that okay. evil, they are that possessed. We start looking at them like, okay, these are people that have a public health challenge, and what can we do to help them? Mm. So we have been helping for almost a decade now. Great. So now I hear some people say that um, it is is it not all these big big men that their children are always using drug after if they don't have money, would they see money to go and buy drugs? Is that true? Mm, is, that it, is it uh, an elitist thing? No, it's not. It's it cuts across. Um, Today, if the person has one billion, he can buy the one of one billion. Today, if he has another amount, he can buy the one. Or, or he can go into the, the pit toilet oh. and blow in the air I receive or find the dongle. There are so many substances. We try not to mention some of these things so that we don't inspire, inspire them. people mm. to explore some of these drugs. But it's not about elitist thing. It's not about social strata. It's not about that. It's a... It's a public health concern. Different people are coping with situations and some people use this mm. to cope. From the one drinking alcohol to the one... To the if you look at the statistics, statistics in Nigeria say that for every seven person in Nigeria, one has used drugs in the last one year. Mm. And for every five people that have experimented with drugs, that one has a substance use disorder. For every four people with a substance use disorder, one of them is a woman. And the statistics show that women go faster from casual drug usage to problematic drug usage, especially when they inject drugs. But in terms of rehabilitation and treatment, for every 20 persons that is rehabilitated or is treated for substance use disorder, only one of them is a woman. And that's because of stigma. Women mm -hmm. face more stigma in terms of accessing treatments they face stigma from fellow drug users they face stigma from the caregivers and they face stigma too from doing reintegration back into society after the yeah. treatment mm. women always have unique needs that need to be met as one of the reasons that organization is doing uh and do shooting a documentary in sokoto to show the unique challenges that women have in substance use Mm. Yes. Okay, so we'll definitely come back to all that you said with regards to um, stigma because I hear that it is not even the coming out to talk. It is the stigma <coughs> that most people face that makes them to just return back to their cocoon and then decide not to talk about it. Mm. Well, let's go on with a quick break and when we return, we'll continue this conversation with Kenneth Aneto. We'll see you after this time out. Do join us again. For those who, at what point is it dangerous? Now I need help. There's the experimental stage. There's the the casual drug using stage. Then there's the intensive stage, use stage. Okay. Then there's the dependency stage. Experimental stage, maybe the person tries it one or two times. The casual stage, the person is, you say, okay, maybe sometimes I just, maybe on weekends, uh, or maybe if I go to, I don't drink, if I go to a party and they are drinking, I might take a glass of wine. Then there's the intensive use stage. The person doesn't take drugs, but when it's weekend, he has a, a, a crew, he has a group mm. that they go and relax. Yeah. When they relax, they, they might say, they, they buy two cartons of, of beer whenever the crew gets together. They buy three bottles of azul anytime the crew gets together they always have five distance of shisha with some drink anytime they get together but he doesn't during the week is cool mm. but in the weekend intensive use mm. then they now have the dependency stage okay. the dependency yeah. stage is when a person has become dependent on a drug sometimes it might manifest as a person tying a particular drug to a certain type of activity 
that okay. if they don't use this drug, they cannot cope or do that activity in such a manner. Some examples could be anytime the person wants to go and play sports, you must take this particular drug. I'm not just, I'm trying to open scenarios so mm. that you'll not be like, it's only when they want to do something bad. Mm. Anytime he wants to take drug, wants to go and play football, he must have taken this particular thing. I even hear some people say, before I can read. Before I, I can hear, read. yeah, hear. So now, anytime the person feels he has an examination coming, he goes and buy a particular drug for that. Mm. Whenever the, the person wants to meet madame, or madame wants to meet Oga in the other room, mm. they now go and get a particular type of drug. Okay. So they have started to tie the drug use to a particular scenario. Okay. And they're becoming dependent on the effect of that drug. Okay. Us. This is the conversation. We are reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital of Buja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed out on the first part of the show, but then you can still join the second part as my guest in the show today is Kenneth Anito, who is the executive di director of A New Thing. Okay, so before we went on that break, we've actually talked about the stigma and all, but then now you have um, most people who um, would rather prefer, it looks like the 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 surge of drug abuse or drug misuse keeps rising, it keeps increasing and would um, associate it with um, insecurity, banditry and all, um, youthful exuberance and all. And then you have um, the Gen Z's and the Gen Z buddies that will come out and tell you if, oh, if I don't use XYZ drug, the plenty, plenty names, I'm not going to call them like we already talked about. So what exactly can be done especially to curb this menace because most like i said the gen z's and then the gen z bodies will they'll be like if i don't use i am not don't, if you cannot beat them join them that's the mentality they have yes 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 um in terms of addressing the substance use challenge it's that's that's the best thing best thing you said in terms of addressing the challenge we there are a large variety of stakeholders in the intervention value chain and let me just break down a couple we start with those into prevention okay. there's some people that are taxed with the responsibilities of going to some of the secondary schools primary schools to talk to some of the youths there so that they can stop early initiation of drug use what does early initiation mean before they start okay. before they initiate using drugs okay then we have the other people that are into sensitization into outreaches those that are going to the communities to talk to some of the youths there, to talk to the religious leaders, the imams, the pastors, talk to even the the traditional leaders about the dangers of drug abuse and why they should create things, why they should create scenarios, why they should be safeguarding the communities, why they should make sure that the community is drug free so okay. that people's minds are open to the dangers of drug abuse and understand that drug abuse is a public health challenge, not a criminal justice issue. Okay, mm -hmm. public health challenge, but not a criminal justice issue. Yes. Okay. Then we now look at the the NDLA. Apart from the drug demand reduction, which is sensitization and prevention, also look at the supply reduction. Them going after the barons, creating scenarios, tightening the borders, working with other law enforcement agencies, synergy in the system to tighten the borders to make sure that these nefarious substances don't enter into the country, to work with other distinct, create scenarios where they can go after the barons, close their source of funding, distinct repatriate funds from other, working to tighten the grip of the people that actually sell the substances in our society. We now work with the other people that are in advocacy. Our, by the grace of God, um, from, as our work was noticed, I was appointed to work with a committee on drugs and narcotics in the Senate and in the House. Yes, so we now work with that. legislators on how they can how they can create programs in their own communities okay. that will be that will reduce the influence of substance, how they can create policies that can work to keep Nigeria drug free. Different types of advice, different type of advocacy going on that level. Then we now have the media. The media is in charge of informing the mindsets of a generation. So the media begins to paint a picture of what substance abuse really is. That is a public health challenge, mm. not a criminal justice issue. Mm. So that people will not feel 
feel hurt to seek help so that people will feel solace that okay since this is the public opinion and people understand it we can actually reach out tell people have a challenge and get help the media can also publicize give like free airtime to people like us to raise awareness on these issues to also be able to call out treatment facilities that are also available then we have the people that are into rehabilitation those are the ones that have facilities where people get treated for substance use disorder and i hear you have to pay for it i mean you have to pay for it it's a it's a paid service because some of these facilities there are different type of that different type of treatment options for people mm. and there's residential treatment that one you live there they okay. feed you you sleep there you stay there between three months to one year there are faith-based institutions mm. that might take you for free or you might have to pay for it there are outpatient programs which you are going there for counseling come go for counseling okay then they are talking to a clergy sometimes talking to a clergy could just be what a person needs talk to your imam talk to your pastor and the person will actually come off the drugs so that different type of treatment options and that's in the sector in the treatment sector then we now have those into harm reduction harm reduction is a concept that was coined from the fact that some people have decided that this is how they're going to be so how can we keep them in that that scenario and create a situation where they do not harm themselves and be a harm to others okay harm reduction as a concept was deployed when we had a challenge with hiv aids in africa some organizations started sharing free condoms for people mm -hmm. so and since they say they must have sex let them not be spreading hiv so in that same situation they have people in the harm reduction sector here in in the in substance use disorder creating like buprofen some other drugs like this giving it to people they have needle programs where they give needles to people and they give them a type of that's similar to that type of drug the opioid that they use but it's not really that addictive okay it gives them the feeling of taking a drug but it does not get them give them that high high and okay. from there some people can come off the drug is a proven system that has worked in different societies okay. different countries and it's been adopted in other african countries so you can see that along the intervention value chain there are a lot of stakeholders so it's important that everybody plays that role in whatever place that they find themselves the policies ministry of health to creating policies to for for all this for everyone on this value chain mm. creating policies for harm reduction the creating policies for the alcohol for alcohol in Nigeria, the use of alcohol. I was appointed to work with the committee for the creation of a national alcohol policy. So there are different stakeholders and they all have their place to play. So the media, thank you for this platform. We pray that you continue to give platforms to raise awareness, to share information and to desensitize the mind of the public. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to ask you two questions and I'd like you to unbundle them in one breath. One, for those who, at what point is it dangerous? Now I need help. At what point is that person who is into drugs, will that person say, okay, now it is time to decipher if I need help and how I should go about it. And then secondly, um, you talked about um, the uh, your work with, um, as a, uh, the consultant of um the National Assembly with regards to drugs and narcotics. What exactly are you doing for them? Are you bringing up policies or programs as um, someone who has been there, done that? I will start with the, with the first one. The first one being that when we, if someone is opportune to be diagnosed, wants to be diagnosed for substance use disorder, upon first arriving at a treatment center, the person could be made to fill a questionnaire okay or a person could be some close to a person could meet to fill a questionnaire and this questionnaire could probably answer this question they have best there are about 13 questions some places may use 12 questions but there's a standardized questionnaire in this questionnaire you find questions like how often do you use the drug okay two or three times a week two or three times a day you find questions like does your drug use make you have challenges at your workplace find questions like does your drug use make you to have challenges in your family or does it, your drug use does it affect members of your family you find questions like if you do not use your drug does it make you act violent you find questions like 
Does your drug use make you have financial challenges? You find questions like, has your drug use made you have a challenge with law enforcement? Mm. So there are like 13 questions like that. Anybody that has, that ticks more than two questions has a substance use challenge. Uh. Anybody that ticks more than four on that list of 13 questions, okay. a person has a serious substance use challenge. Then you start to now diagnose what are the particular areas that can prove areas for counseling, areas for what to have intervention. Then for your second okay, no, question. So what, sorry, sorry, I had a button. What if I don't have to go through the counseling first in, at home? Just uh, you're this person that, okay, you just use drugs or then you're able to go buy and use, but then I've not gone for that counseling. At what point in my mind, I just know, okay, I think uh, I need yeah, to. Yeah, with, with these things that I'm saying, um, there are different levels of substance use. There's the experimental stage. There's the the casual drug using stage. Then there's the intensive stage use stage. Okay. And there's the dependency stage. Experimental stage. Maybe the person tries it one or two times. The casual stage. The person is you say okay. Maybe sometimes I just maybe on weekends. Uh, or maybe if I go to, I don't drink. If I go to a party and they are drinking, I might take a glass of wine. Then there's the intensive use stage. The person doesn't take drugs, but when it's weekend, he has a, a, a crew, he has a group mm. that they go and relax. Yeah. When they relax, they, they might say, they, they buy two cartons of, of beer whenever the crew gets together. They buy, three bottles of azul anytime the crew gets together they always have five distance of shisha with some drink anytime they get together but he doesn't during the week he's cool mm. but in the weekend intensive use mm. then they now have the dependency stage okay. the dependency stage is when a person has become dependent on a drug sometimes it might manifest as a person tying a particular drug to a certain type of activity that okay. if they don't use this drug, they cannot cope or do that activity. In such a manner, some examples could be, anytime the person wants to go and play sports, you must take this particular drug. I'm not just, I'm trying to open scenarios so mm -hmm. that you'll not be like, it's only when they want to do something bad. Mm -hmm. Anytime he wants to take drug, wants to go and play football, you must have taken this particular thing. I even hear some people say, before I can read, Before I, I can hear, you are here. So now, anytime the person feels he has an examination coming, he goes and buy a particular drug for that. Mm. Whenever the, the person wants to meet Madame or Madame wants to meet Oga in the other room, mm. they now go and get a particular type of drug. Okay. So they have started to tie the drug use to a particular scenario okay. and they're becoming dependent on the effect of that drug okay. to cope with those type of scenarios. Ah, they're becoming okay. dependent. Then one now says that, before I can even walk out of my house, I must be on this particular thing. Before I can mm. go to a party and be social, I must use this particular thing. Before I can eat. Before I can eat, I mm. must use this particular thing. So the person is becoming independent. Without it, the person feels abnormal. So the, mm. he must have that for okay. him to be normal. Mm. Yes. Okay. So those are different stages. So when a person notices in either of these stages, he, mm. he can, from this interview, he can know where he is. Mm. And when you're in that stage or in any stage around here, according to our diagnosis, if you feel like whenever you use drug use, it affects you negatively. Mm. Whenever you use drug use, it affects your family. Your drug use is affecting your work. work. Your drug use is making you to have challenges with law enforcement. You are using the drug multiple times in a day, in a week. So you can start knowing that you have a challenge and you should start getting help. So where's my first go-to? Your first go to. Mm, there are different there are different ways to address this. You can talk to a friend. Okay. You can talk to a professional. You can talk to a clergy, a religious leader that you trust. You can reach out to organizations like our own. You can reach out to a new international foundation with a lot of counseling and a lot of referral services for people that have substance use disorder. Okay. Uh, the UN ODC during the COVID, because of the rising mental health challenge and drug drug substance abuse challenge that they had they launched a drug free helpline okay so if, if if you go online now you can google the drug help net once you google google drug 
help net you see a list of organizations in nigeria shared according to geopolitical zones that you can call or reach out to and there will be counselor there you can also reach out to the ndla drug free helpline you want to just google ndla drug helpline you would see a number that will come out there and with that number you can get across to a professional where then when they launched it it's a call center that have a lot Is of professionals there yeah it's still free okay it's still free you can reach out you really get help you get the help that you need okay so let's talk about um what you do for okay the in, terms of, in terms of the committee we advise okay we advise on how they can carry out some of their programs with their communities we advise on policies looking at we know to reform policies and things like that we advice we give directions when they have some meetings we represent the chairman at some meetings that they can go for so we generally just work with them to help safeguard the work that they're doing mm -hmm. advice see how it can be more accommodating sometimes there might be a disconnect from people that are in the senate with people mm -hmm. that are in the communities mm -hmm. since we are used to being in the communities as I just said, um, Paul that works with me is in the studio. In the last four months, we have been in Sogoto, we have been in Medugri, we have been in Bauchi. Mm. Him has been in Joss, apart from my own, him has been in Joss. He has been in Yobe, apart from Ankan. Why, why does Ankan it look like you are, you're mentioning the northern? Is um, that where you have more of this? Mm, I, I won't say it's where we have more of this, it's where we are opportune to be this month. Oh, okay. As I was in the studio, we were getting calls that we should look at what we can do in Kano. Okay. So this month is in the north. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, we're in the southwest. I was actually spoke. I spoke to the special advisor to the governor on drug abuse about a program in Quara. So he wanted us to come to Quara to see what we can do for them in Quara. So it's today we are here. By the grace of God, tomorrow we're, we're in another state. Mm. Okay, so we, we usually take questions from our social media and we ha when we start, when um, we announce that we're going to be talking about um, drug abuse, we had loads, zillions of questions, but I'll take a few of them. And this person is saying that, um, let me just paraphrase, he's actually talking about um, the NDLA guys and then according to him, he said, after all, you still have some bad eggs in the basket. So how do you deal with such when you have um, inside the um, mm. law enforcement mm. agencies, you have bad eggs. How do you spot them and how do you deal with mm. such? And then the second person is talking about um, some of the legislators and the um, some of the legislators who also have a, their hands in this cookie jar. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is that we are all helped by God. Under the leadership of the chairman and chief executive, Buba Mar Major General Buba Marwa retired. There have been a lot of innovations that have happened in the NDLA, more so ever done than have been done since the beginning of the agency to this point in time. Yeah. We have seen his proactive and his heart, his heart, his passion towards revamping the agency and towards safeguarding the nation from drug abuse. In in the Bible, we saw that for every twelve disciples. <laughs> There's always that was a Judas. Judas, and you that just gives us a picture of how sometimes society is. Mm -hmm. But it, it now takes the responsibility of a good leader to now work against that. And I will not say I would agree that in most organizations that a few bad eggs, mm -hmm. but I would notice, and it's worthy of note that I've seen him go after bad eggs. There was a day in the NDLA headquarters, everybody came to work normally, they locked the door. And they did a random drug test for everybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they just came to work. They locked the gates and did a random drug test for everybody. It takes someone that has integrity, someone that is determined to make positive change, and someone that does not fear the repercussions mm. to carry that type of measure out. And that's the type of person he is. And that's the type of leader that NDLA deserves and should have. So I believe him doing it at the headquarters is enough to send message to the whole other I didn't, I didn't follow up on whether I was done in other agencies, but with what me I saw, because I came, we had a, the special advisor to the president on NGO, had a carried out for a courtesy visit. So when we got there, because they said, if I had come two days earlier, I would happen to be 
in the compound at that point in time okay. who might have been subject <laughs> subject <laughs> to a to a drug test mm. so I, i'm impressed with that and a, and and other agencies can take a a step can take an encouragement can follow that pace too so if they say that uh, where your right starts is where someone else's um right stops and all that is that a violation of anyone's human right um, it's when you look at it holistically you work for a agency that is responsible for safeguarding and delivering a drug-free nigeria mm. persecuting the barons counseling the the users and you are a drug user are not we're not saying that we're not talking about legal drugs mm. because they are legal drugs mm. alcohol is a legal drug caffeine coffee is a beverage mm. that has a an effect on some of the stimulants mm. but it's still legal we're talking about people that now work in the agency and are using narcotic psychoactive substance that can alter the ability to carry out that work. So, you 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 tell me what to happen to them. Now. <laughs> if I can't come and you are, you're under drugs, you are harassing someone that is using drugs to mm. look at it. Okay. So I believe that is something that should be done. Okay, okay. So now, when you go to, when you pass through um, Guarimpa area, you find some boys asking you just want to do like you want to pack small they'll just call you out and start asking how far and then at some point it looks like they sweep them away sometimes and then there's this season that they are not there again there's another season there's an outbreak fat and an epidemic of a pandemic of them again so what exactly do you think that happens at that point is it that they just um, you have um, we are always like they always in nigeria we're always very uh, let's get serious when there's a new policy but then later on we all decide to relax on our guns mm. and then what can be done especially when you have things like that mm, the truth is that the this this question you're asking me is it's more of a NDLA, the head of operations should be answering this question but if I happen to be head of operations, I was here. Or if you happen to be asked by, okay, advise the committee. The what committee. can we do? Um, um, I, would, I would advise that we don't discuss our strategies in public. Oh, <laughs> why is this sounding <laughs> like a political now? <laughs> no, no, it's the truth. You're saying, how do we go after barons? What do you advise you should go after? The baron is in front of the team with baron. What are they planning to do next? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Then he's like, okay, boys. Watch out for this, watch out for this, watch out for this. He says, thank you. Thank you, Captain <laughs> TV. So at least we don't discuss the strategies on on supply reduction on TV. But strategies for drug demand reduction, for the counseling, for the sensitization, to help the people that have drug use challenges, we can advise you because everyone has a part to play in that. Maybe the most basic advice I can give on supply reduction mm. is if you see something, say something. Okay. If you see something, say something. If you see something, if you know that this is happening, you reach out, reach out to an NDLA command, reach out to the police, say something. Okay. That would be the best advice. I won't tell you, I won't tell you the, the, the tactics that you should use in addressing the issue because that, there are some adventurous, yeah. adventurous people here <laughs> watching on air. They might not, when they have the strategy, they might not want to wait for the law enforcement agency to come That's and act. Them. They might want to to deploy the strategy. Mm -hmm. And you are dealing with criminals. Mm -hmm. All right. Even as we begin to round off, we'd like to get um, your last word to um, victims who are in this already. And then also to um, the law enforcement agency and to parents. Because I remember you talked about the child who says my dad used the drugs so i don't see it as bad so for those parents who already have drugs littered here there and everywhere so what are your last words to these people um, um my words would be to first to the ndla ndla you are doing an awesome job i pray that the legislators continue to increase the budget allocations the new barracks that are being built are going to be a safe haven for everybody that is taxed with this responsibility. I pray that God gives wisdom to NDLA to carry out the full function of their responsibilities. 
to the general public whether using drugs or not using drugs drug use comes with risk drug use comes with dangerous risk and we are setting a precedence for our families for our generations for us that observe people using drugs or observe people selling drugs we must understand that anybody caught in that web of drug use or watching that thing is susceptible to dangers either the person's children starting to use drugs or either the person himself being caught one day doing a raid or something so if you see something say something for everyone in public let's begin to look at substance use as a public health challenge and not a criminal justice issue if you see someone that has a substance use disorder because of the many risk factors that can make a person susceptible to the drug let's cut down on the judgment let's cut down on discrimination let's help these guys our brothers our sisters our friends to get the help that they need a drug-free nigeria starts with you let's make nigeria drug free together my name is kenneth aneto i work for a new international foundation also work for the senate committee on drugs and narcotics thank you so much mm. thank you so much kenneth aneto but before we let you go here you say a drug-free nigeria is possible and it begins with you yes do you see a drug-free nigeria yes i do how soon I see it as God permits, as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Awesome. What a fine way to lead, um, to anchor this conversation. Thank you so much, Kenneth. And it has been a wonderful time having this talk with you. Pleasure is mine. All right, viewers, that's where we end this conversation for today. We have been chatting with Kenneth Anito, who is um, the executive director of The New Thing. And he is also um, the consultant for the National Assembly Committee for um, with regards to drugs and narcotics it's been a wonderful time here on d conversation i'm sure you must have been rightly educated entertained and informed i'll see you again next time my name is annabelle oji god bless you and yours and god bless nigeria